The United States is facing its worst veterinarian shortage. This map from the USDA shows vet shortages in every state. It's a shortage only made worse by the pandemic. KSHB 41's Gian Kim is taking this story 360. You'll be hearing from multiple perspectives so you can get the full picture when it comes to taking care of your furry companions. Our phones are always ringing. Our email is always full. Few know the demand for a veterinarian like Dr. Amanda Isley. She's medical director at the Humane Society of Greater Kansas City. Right now, their affordable care clinic is operating at 70% capacity. The problem is demand for veterinary care has grown by 50%. We didn't have 50% more staff to deal with it, so that's been the, the tough part. That tough part is a shortage of veterinarians being felt nationwide. More people owning pandemic pets. Lots of people got puppies and kittens. Only makes the issue worse. We're taking this story 360, hearing from a concerned pet owner, a local shelter struggling to keep up, a working vet worried about burnout, the Humane Society offering low-cost medical care, and a professor teaching the next generation of veterinarians. It's kind of a struggle. Pet owners like Victoria Sinden have fewer options these days. This is Coco. She's 11 months old. She's a Pitsky. Sinden recently felt helpless after Coco ran over a fence and injured her leg. She needed attention and the thought of waiting six hours knowing that she was in pain was a lot. Starting route. Sending her to Johnson County 30 minutes out from her regular vet. The clinic had cut back hours and closed on multiple days due to staffing shortage. In order to accommodate them, you have to go a little bit further widen your search you can no longer just rely on like neighborhood vet services here at kc pet project the total intake of dogs and cats is the highest it's ever been during the shelter's 10-year history strays lost pets and owner surrenders are a growing problem this year we're well on track to take in over 15,000 animals that requires additional resources. Chief Communications Officer Tori Fugate says only four vets on staff are full time. A fifth opening hasn't been filled for a year. It's hard to fill these positions because there are so many open positions available across the country. But more animals mean more demand for care. In June alone, the vet team performed nearly a thousand surgeries. Every day is an all hands on deck situation. Our veterinarians see everything here. So we act almost like an ER trauma center a lot of the days. But not only are animals coming in at record highs, animals are also being adopted at record speed. Across the nation, this means more burden on corporate and private sectors. For veterinarian Dr. Matthew Silvius, there's a method to the madness inside Eagle Animal Hospital in Riverside. But when you scale back the layers, a lot of us feel like we just don't get a break. COVID-19 quarantines and working from home gave millions of Americans the push to adopt a pet. But it was around the same time veterinarians around the country quit due to mental health, work-life balance, and higher paying jobs. That gap hasn't closed since. We'll have owners get upset when they can't get an appointment or can't come see us. And it's, it's hard for us to deal with emotionally as well because we want to be there to help people. Day-to-day -day operations here look like employees working overtime and being stretched thin. They do a ton of work. At this location alone, the hospital takes in almost 130 pets a day. Whoever your vet is, they care. They care about you. They're doing the best they can um, with what they have to work with. There you go. That's good. For a population of our community, they don't have the luxury of choice. We're back with Dr. Amanda Isley at the Humane Society of Greater Kansas City. We know that we're serving that underserved community and that without us, there's a lot of pets that would go without care. Dr. Isley says when the vet shortage shook the industry, it was their clientele that was hit the hardest. They don't have that extra income to to help their pets because they might not even have that income for themselves. And so they're really here trying to do what they can. Their affordable care clinic offers procedures at a much lower cost than other areas hospitals, but with two full-time veterinarians tending to 3,000 animals a year. They're quite literally dog-tired. In hopes to find a solution for the industry labor shortage, it begins with that love of animals. We sat down with Dr. Leah Cohn at the MU College of Veterinary Medicine. There has always been a very stiff competition to get into veterinary school. She tells me the college is at full capacity for admission. With only 33 accredited vet schools in the United States, this is the case at most of them. So where is the veterinarian drop-off happening? Cohn believes, along with injuries and compassion fatigue, it's money. Educational debt is a big barrier to participation. 
it's also potentially one of the barriers to reaching the communities that could add to our diversity and populations that have not traditionally been in veterinary medicine. Cohn also suggests increasing the pool of people pursuing veterinary technical degrees. They're similar to nurse practitioners in human medicine. It could help lighten the workload of veterinarians and increase manpower. A much shorter time than the eight years that it takes to become a veterinarian is one way that we can be helpful. The ever-changing industry continues to fight for sustainable solutions. But some things will never change. The demand for pet care will always remain. And the love of animals from those who choose the profession will never fade. That's our primary concern. Jian Kim, KSHB 41 News. Okay, what do you think about this story? Do you have a thought about this or a topic you'd like us to go 360 on? Email us. 360 at KSHB.com is the email. You can also follow KSHB 41 on social media to join the conversation about this.